Good morning once again from Hermit's Wood Campsite where once again it is surprisingly warm for 1,800 meters above sea level in May in South Africa. Um, I'm, in, I'm in a t-shirt which is actually pretty surprising considering two nights ago we were <laughs> dressed like Eskimos trying to scrape the frost and the ice off of our tents and stuff like that. But we won't complain about this. Um, today we are driving, geez, I actually don't know how long it will be because the route we're taking is is not a, a main road route and also we might be stopping quite a few times so it's kind of unknown and for that reason we want to get moving pretty quickly um i'm guessing it'll be about six or seven hours of driving possibly even more depending how long we stop for so tent is being packed up uh, truck is being packed up and i'm guessing in about half an hour we'll be on our way so just downing some some coffee once again and uh, once we've got our fuel in us we'll be ready to hit the road Upon exiting the camping area and driving through the Drakensberg Gardens Resort, we come across a rather funny scene. Baboons roaming around causing trouble and the resort staff patrolling around with paintball guns trying to deter them. The funny part is that I know for a fact that the bunny huggers who come and stay at this fancy resort would be appalled that their precious baboons are being pelted with paintballs, but that is the reality of life in South Africa. Sometimes you need a drastic solution to a recurring problem. Today we're traveling north and we'll be camping at Cathedral Peak. The quickest route would be to get on the N3 highway, but our goal is to hug the Drakensberg as much as possible, and so we take a rough, winding gravel road and prepare for the long drive. As usual, we've decided to take the road less traveled, and <laughs> we're probably, uh, probably adding quite a lot of time onto our drive today by doing this but the alternative is to go sort of more uh, towards the coast on flatter land on a, on the tar roads which are like super well traveled highways and although that might have saved us time it takes us away from the Drakensberg and it also takes us into the traffic and I think the, the, the point of of, uh, of this trip is to try get up close and personal to the Drakensberg mountains so the route we've taken kind of hugs the the Drakensberg uh, World Heritage Site National Park whatever you want to call it and what's nice about that is we get to to get a view of the mountains on our left hand side as we're driving north um, and so we can look at a map or look at guide GPS and identify certain mountains with we've heard of before and kind of point them out so for example we've just seen uh, Tabana and Kenyana which is the highest mountain in in southern Africa at like 3,400 and something meters it's uh, it's pretty high and this is the first time I've actually seen it with my own eyes so that's great we've also seen Sani Pass which we drove yesterday and as we travel north we're going to start to see more stuff but yeah although we have to endure some bumps and lots of tight twists and uh, really bad gravel roads uh, it's all part of the fun and uh, we should still make it to the places we want to go today in time so that's great as it turns out we made a great decision to take the back roads because we came across some beautiful scenes along the way this area is full of rolling hills flowing rivers dams and waterfalls and although being surrounded by hills can sometimes obscure our views of the Drakensberg a bit, every now and again we'd round a corner and find a large mountain towering above us. It was a really fun morning. Tortoise waterfall in Cypress Cave. Love, those are my favorite things in the world. What, Cypress is it? thing and tortoises. It's like a dream. There's no tortoises there. Should we turn around? No, no, no. We need to go to the Giant's Castle. Giant's Castle. Tortoises and cypresses. Well. It's a tortoise waterfall. Yes. And a cypress cave. I love waterfalls. I love tortoises. <laughs> love cypresses. Like that place was made for me. I do believe that is a uh, giant's castle directly in front of us. I might be wrong, but according to Guy GPS, that is giant's castle. So we're heading in that general direction. It'll be nice to see it up close and personal. Looking forward to it.
This road takes us into the World Heritage Site and soon we spot animals grazing in the grassy hills. One of the most recognisable scenes in the central Drakensberg is this. Champagne Castle and Kathkin Peak with Monk's Cowl in the middle. These mountains are really high. So high in fact that we'll be able to see them for the next three days of our journey. Here they are from the north, taken from the Cathedral Peak Road, and here they are from further north, near the Sentinel, 70 kilometers away. And from the day after that, near the Golden Gate Highlands, 100 kilometers away. I mentioned in part 2 that I felt the southern Drakensberg was a little bit more unspoilt than the central and northern Drakensberg. What I mean by that is the settlements. We are now well and truly into Zululand and there are far more settlements and people here than in the south. This means more overgrazing from livestock, more litter, fewer wild animals and fewer indigenous trees. The one thing that the north does have going for it though is really spectacular mountains that just seem to stand out more than the south with steeper cliff faces, more jagged peaks, and so much character. For lunch we'll be stopping at Giant's Castle. It's a name that every South African knows, and it's a place that I've always wanted to see. Nicole grew up pretty close to here, and she's been here before as a kid, so she was looking forward to reliving those childhood memories as we drew closer. Man, once again I'm just blown away by the, the beauty of this place. We're doing a little walk down to a cave, but I mean just the views all around us. How do you beat this? <laughs> it's just insane. Rivers flowing down there, Giant's Castle at the back, just amazing. We still have a long way to go and the day is drawing on, so time to hit the road again, heading north towards the Cathedral Peak Road. This wasn't a particularly scenic part of the journey as we found ourselves surrounded by villages and plantations, with much of the mountain range shrouded in cloud cover. But as with most of South Africa, there's always something to see, whether it be bird life or sweeping views over a valley. back on a gravel road in the middle of nowhere on our way to Cathedral Peak Hotel. Very fancy hotel so it's a bit of a change from what we've experienced so far and uh, unfortunately there is a bit of a cloud cover that's going over the Drakensberg so we won't be able to see the mountains in the same amount of detail as we have so far but we'll keep fingers crossed that that clears later today and, and tomorrow because we've got some really cool plans for tomorrow. 
Uh, but for now, I guess for the rest of the day, our agenda is just to chill out and, and relax at the, at the hotel. We have a big buffet dinner tonight with some fancy roasts and desserts and all kinds of things. So we'll just sit back, relax and enjoy that and we'll get back to the sort of fun exploring tomorrow. Unfortunately, as we passed Kathkin Peak and Champagne Castle, they were a little bit clouded up, but we do get our first views of the iconic Cathedral Peak up ahead with the inner and outer horn to its left. And as we drew closer, they kept on becoming clearer and clearer, almost like the bow of a giant ship coming through a thick fog on a still morning. The Cathedral Peak Hotel is one of those old historic gems that have to be on your list if you really want to get to know the Drakensberg. It's quite fancy and it isn't cheap, but if you want to spoil yourself just for one night, this is the place. There is actually quite a lot to do here. Endless hiking opportunities, a pool, a bar area, great rooms and wild animals. Or rather, not so wild animals walking around. In the passages and halls there are plenty of historic photos telling the story of the hotel and its surroundings and it's definitely worth taking the time to read them. There are also little 3D models showing the surrounding mountains and their ascent routes which is very helpful if you need to get your bearings but there's nothing quite like going outside to experience the mountains for yourself so as the sun disappears behind the mountains that's exactly what we do. I, I can't put into words how just how beautiful this is and um, I will say that out of all the places we've been to this is the, the by far the most beautiful and um, maybe tomorrow's better but so far this is just this is just amazing it is very luxury so if, if you if you do want to rough it a bit and sort of um, stay away from the, all the fancy stuff then maybe this isn't right for you but if you've got a bit of money to spend and and you want to spoil yourself this place is top-notch, five-star, amazing. Chef's kiss. <laughs> mm. True story, I hadn't packed any long pants with me on this trip and the dress code wouldn't allow me to have dinner without long pants. So I actually had to buy a pair from the receptionist. But it was worth it as we were treated to the best buffet dinner I've ever had in my life. Needless to say, I stepped like a baby on this night. In the next episode, we'll be continuing our loop around the Drakensberg as we head towards what, in my opinion, is the most spectacular part of the whole mountain range, the amphitheater. We climb up to a viewpoint overlooking the Tugela Gorge, the Devil's Tooth, the Sentinel, and of course, the 983 meter high Tugela Falls, the recently proclaimed highest waterfall on Earth. We'll then finish the day in the Golden Gate Highlands and spend the night in a log cabin high in the mountains. Thanks for watching and I'll see you then.